Hey everyone, welcome back to another post from r slash creepy encounters, the subreddit where people post stories of their creepy interactions. Today's post, I could have been one of Epstein's victims. I was watching the Jeffrey Epstein documentary on Netflix last night and I am spooked. Literally had a mini panic attack with all these memories flooding in. As I'm laying in bed watching, a girl's face flashes across the screen and I recognized one of his victims as one of my really good childhood friends. I don't know what this belongs in this subreddit, but here's my story. I've lived in South Florida almost all my life with my crazy controlling parents that wouldn't let me do anything as a kid. No phone calls to friends, no extracurricular activities unless it was academic, couldn't have friends over, and you can forget about me going over to anyone's house. Plus, my dad worked at my school during my elementary school years, so I had to be on my best behavior. So when I went to middle school, I was so effing pumped. Finally, some type of freedom. My personality started to shine, and making friends came easy to me. Fast forward to a year in, and I had become really good friends with these two girls. We'll call them Heather and Sharon. They were both pretty, popular, friendly, but what fascinated me most was that Heather was the only girl in middle school that I knew that was able to sleep over at a boy's house. It was something so foreign to me since my parents told me I couldn't even go on a date with a boy until after I graduated. High school or college? They didn't specify. So I automatically thought she was the coolest chick I've ever met. Throughout our friendship, we were known as the tripod. We had all the same classes and lunch periods, so we all got pretty close. Over time, Heather would always ask me to hang out with her and Sharon either after school or on the weekends, but with my parents, there was no way in hell. I did attempt multiple times to ask for permission with no success each time, not even a maybe. I was so bummed because I always felt left out having Heather and Sharon hang out without me something I would eventually become grateful for. One day, while sitting out in the courtyard for lunch, Heather pulled me aside and asked what I thought about skipping school for a day. I instantly freaked and thought about that automated message the school calls home with to let your parents know you weren't at school. If my parents ever got that, my ass would be toast. So I shut that idea down right away, kinda laughed it off because there would be no way to pull it off but she literally would not stop asking. So eventually she convinced me and we were ready to start the planning. It took us about a week every day during lunch trying to figure out how to pull this off. The thrill of it had me so excited as I've never done anything like this. The plan was to have my mom drop me off at school as usual and have the girls there waiting for me and we would simply just walk off to the gas station that's near the school and have one of Heather's friends pick us up. Not sure how I planned on dodging the school call, but whatever. Oh, and I forgot to add, Heather made it a point several times to remind me that I need to wear something that would give me an innocent look. I blew this off because I was 13 years old. I looked innocent enough. Plan goes smoothly and we are walking to the gas station. But as we're walking, Heather's cell phone is blowing up, like constant phone calls and texts coming through. Each one she answers, just meet us at the gas station like we usually do. At this point, I'm confused, because I thought it was supposed to be the tripod hanging out for the day. As we get closer to the gas station, I see a group of like seven other girls standing there, and they're all around the same age, 12 to 14 years old. Some girls I've seen around school, others I don't recognize, but they all perk up when they see Heather walk up. All of a sudden, Heather yells, who's ready to make some money? And almost all the girls raise their hand and start cheering. I grabbed Sharon and asked her what she's talking about. And the look that Sharon gave me is one I'll never forget. It was like she was saying, get out now while you can. It just made me very uncomfortable and she never ended up saying anything. It was just weird a big group of young girls who should be in school just hanging out at a gas station? As we're standing there, two black Lincoln town cars pull up and make a sudden stop right in front of us. Heather starts numbering the girls and tells the first group to get in the first car 
and as they do, the car speeds away. The other one slowly rolls the window down, and I see this older man with sunglasses just sitting there smiling. He asks if we're ready to go to the mansion, which excites the two other girls standing behind me. He opens the door and they both jump in, followed by Sharon. Heather is standing next to me and nudges me to go on, but as she does, I start going off on her, asking her what the hell is going on, where are we going, who is this man, and why didn't she mention this in any of her plans? She's looking almost annoyed at me and says, out of all the girls I bring, you're the only one that's giving me a problem. I thought you'd want to get out and finally have some fun. And with your body, you could make a killing. At the time, I was so naive, I didn't know exactly what she meant. But by the tone of her voice and how pressured she was making me feel, I ended up backing out and ran back to school. As embarrassed as I felt for bailing on my friends, I feared my mom and her belt a lot more. Plus, going off in a car with someone I've never met screamed stranger danger. I am so grateful that my parents put that fear in me, or else I don't know if I would have made that smart decision. After that, I barely hung out with Heather again. She tried a few more times, but I just got bad vibes from her and cut her off. But I always saw her randomly walk out of school towards the gas station, always with a group of girls. Sharon, on the other hand, she started to spiral into depression slowly. She would only hang out with Heather and would cling to her like a lost puppy. I noticed she would miss school more frequently, until one day she just stopped coming altogether. Years later, I found out she committed suicide, and recently, after watching the documentary, I'm convinced she was one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims, and Heather was one of his recruiters. Edit. Should have mentioned this happened in 2004 in West Palm Beach. I reached out to the only childhood friend I stay in contact with, and she confirmed that it was in fact my friend whom we went to middle school with in that documentary. Since this morning, I've contacted a friend who's in law enforcement to see if I could speak with someone about what I know. Even the little information I have could help out in some way. As for Sharon, I never met anyone in her family or had any contact information as I was on major lockdown back then, and this was 16 years ago. Still trying to track them down to see if they knew about any of this. It could help explain why she might have taken her life. I'll keep you updated. This is crazy, really. You never tried to ask Sharon after that? Try to understand what the hell this was all about and where they went? I'm glad you're okay and did not let peer pressure get to you. And even if it wasn't about Epstein, nothing good could have come off of you getting into this car. And that's going to wrap up today's post. Whew, this one gives me chills. So creepy. Let us know your thoughts on this one in the comments below. If you liked the video, please leave a like or a comment. It always helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to hear more and see more posts from r slash creepy encounters and other subreddits when they come out on the channel, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching and for listening.